Sampling and Sampling Distributions, Chapter 8.5 to 8.7. This is the second half of the Chapter 8 lectures. The first half of the Chapter 8 lecture, we discussed the, um, the concept of a sampling distribution, and we looked at calculating the mean of the sampling distribution along with the standard error of the sampling distribution. In this chapter, or rather in this part of the lecture, we're going to calculate probabilities using the sampling distribution of means. The central limit theorem, which we discussed in the last lecture, lets us apply all of the applications of the normal distribution to the sampling distribution of means. If a sampling distribution is normally distributed, we can use all the tools of the normal distribution to apply them oh, and apply them to the sampling distribution. So for example, use of normal CDF and IMV norm. Using normal CDF allows us to answer probability questions when dealing with a normal distribution. Because we made the connection between probability and area, normal CDF gives us the area or proportion of area underneath the bell curve so we can use the proportion of area to answer probability questions. Now as soon as we know that a sampling distribution has a shape that is approximately normal, we then have the ability to use normal CDF to answer questions regarding probability. So we can solve probability questions for the sampling distribution of means if the sample size is large enough. And we saw from last lecture that if n, the size of the sample, is greater than 30, we have a sample that's large enough and our sampling distribution of means will be approximately normal. And therefore we can use normal CDF and answer probability questions. This is really, really helpful because in reality, we rarely have access to entire populations. We use samples. So um, if n is greater than 30, we can, make sh we can basically be ensured that the, po the sampling distribution will be normal shaped and you, we could use normal CDF. The other way in which we can make sure that our sampling distribution is normally shaped is if our population is originally normally shaped. So if, if our population is normally distributed and if a problem tells us that the population is normally distributed, then we can be sure that our sampling distribution will also be normally distributed. If we don't know the size of the population or if we don't know the shape of the population, then we can be sure the sampling distribution is nor or normal if n is greater than 30. Okay, so to calculate a probability for a normal distribution, we calculate the area under the normal curve for a given event. So this image should look familiar. We did talk about this in Chapter 7. On the horizontal axis, we have variable x. And the probability that variable x will be somewhere between this location on the horizontal and this location on the horizontal is found by looking at the area under the normal curve between those two values. That is considered the probability of that event happening. Our calculator uses normal CDF and four input values to do this. And um, the four input values that we've put into normal CDF are the low raw score, the high raw score, the mean, and the standard deviation. And um, we did this with z-scores also when our mean and standard deviation were set to 0 and 1. Now we also are going to use normal CDF when understanding probabilities for the sampling distribution. However, when we look at normal CDF for sampling distributions, our lower value is not a raw score, rather it's a sample mean. Our upper value is a sample mean, and the mean of the sampling distribution is denoted by mu sub x bar, so that's what we'll put as the third value, and the fourth value, sigma x bar, is the standard deviation of 
the sampling distribution, otherwise known as the standard error. So when we use normal CDF with the sampling distribution, note that our raw scores or our values that go on the horizontal axis are not what they were from chapter 7. They aren't simply one, raw, one low raw score, one high raw score. They represent sample means. Okay, because the bell curve now on the horizontal axis, when you consider the fact that the bell curve is now representing the sampling distribution, the horizontal axis represents all possible sample means. So in the very center, you have the mean of all sample means, which is the same as the mean of the population. And on the left-hand side, you have values for x-bar, or values for the sample means, that are less than the population mean. And on the right-hand side, you have values of x-bar that are more than the population mean. But it's values of x-bar that are positioned on the horizontal axis, not simple raw scores anymore. So that's why normal CDF lower and upper represent sample means.